In our last video, we discussed how we could actually work with the workflows even further by adding the checkout actions from the marketplace. And also we executed the command or the script right from the workflow using the inline scripting. And also we executed some of the bash PowerShell as well as we tried using the Windows latest runner of the GitHub Actions. And we also understood how we could able to run a script file, which we can execute from a file sitting within our repository. And today in this video, we'll discuss how we could actually create multiple jobs and execute them in sequence as well as in parallel, which we discussed actually as a slide in our last video. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create another job here, which I'm going to be naming it as Selenium test uh job two or something like that and then i'm gonna give two spaces and i'm gonna name this as selenium test job two and then we need to give a runs on command because that is very important because it will define which operating system that we are executing to run this particular job I'm going to use the Ubuntu latest instead of the Windows latest that we have used in our earlier step. And then I'm going to give some of the steps that we are going to be executing. And this time I'm actually going to just print a command to show you that this is going to be a command which is executed once the job is completed, which is the first job is completed. So I'm just going to say this is from second job and then I'm going to do is commit changes and let's go to the action go to the selenium test workflows which is going to be this one and you can see that we now have two jobs one is the selenium test job another one is the selenium test job 2 and both of these are running in parallel and as you can see the job 2 executed in one second whereas the test job which is the first one is keep executing the reason being it has a lot of command compared to this particular job. And because these two are actually running in parallel, one of the job completed pretty quickly, whereas the second one actually ran a bit more. But you can actually think of in a different way as well. For example, if you have a requirement where you need to wait for the first job to complete and then the second job to be executed, you can do that as well. And that's something you can do using a command called as a needs command where you can say that I need the selenium test job one to be there so that I could able to perform this particular operation. So for doing that or the job name and I'm going to paste this selenium test underscore job one and this is going to be like a need of the first job so that the second job can be executed. And now if I go to the action and if I go to the Selenium test workflow this time for this one, you can see that it only shows the Selenium test job. And now the workflow has been changed a bit as well. You can see that the job two is not completed yet because it's waiting for the Selenium test job to be completed so that the second job can be triggered. So you can see that the first job completed and then the second job is going to be executing on the Ubuntu operating system and it is executing as well and it got completed. So this way we can actually make a dependency of the first job to be executed and then the second job can be triggered. So, th so by nature they are all in parallel but once we make the needs it becomes sequential because that can be executed as well. And there are even further cases. For example, if I want to execute the second job only if the first job passes. How can I tell that? Because so far we have only seen the green operation, which is all pass. We have never seen the negative operation yet, but that's not going to be the case in pipeline ever because it's going to fail most of the time. So how do we actually make a step to fail so that we can tell that, all right, if this is failed, I wanted that not to be executed, something like that. So how do I even do that? So for doing that, I'm going to use one of the expression. We'll talk about the expressions later in the course but as of now i'm going to make use of one of the expressions in such a way that it is going to be failing and then it is going to not run the next step something like that so for doing that i'm going to make any of this particular step to fail so i'm just going to say two spaces i'm just going to give a run 
and I'm just gonna give something like this which is not even a correct uh, way of telling it and then I'm gonna just start committing it I know that this is completely wrong and if I go to the action you can see that it is failing because the workflow is actually invalid but let's make it even better because there are two run commands so that's why it is actually failing so let's try to make this something like this and i'm going to do a commit changes so you can see that there is no such command which actually can execute that so you can see it is currently executing the so selenium test job is currently starting to execute and you can see that there is an error operation happened and the second step was failed and then this particular stop uh, execution was failed and this this particular job has been failed automatically the reason being because the first workflow got failed the first job got failed the second job automatically fails because it is dependent on the first job so that is the reason it automatically fails so you don't really have to tell github actions that hey just execute that even if it fails by default so because it in needs of this particular job it will not do that but if they're going to be running in parallel this problem is not going to happen but still there are cases that these two jobs should be dependent but the second job should always work even if the first job get fails so how do i do that so this kind of situation where you have that kind of requirement to be executed even if the first job fails for some reason so in order to do that you can just go to the code and go to the workflow here and that's when i'm going to talk about this particular expression where i can tell here that if you can see that there is an if i can use some if conditions as well where i'm going to tell an expression over here open two braces and i'm going to say always to close braces that's it so this is going to be like an job which is going to execute all the time regardless of the job or not so i have just committed them and i'm going to go to the actions and if i go to the basics over here you will see that the first job is going to execute and it is going to fail and once it fails regardless of its failure the second job should be executed as well and you can see that the second job got executed as well while the first job actually got failed so this is the way that i was talking about that you could actually able to run the second job using this always keyword which is cool so this is the same thing applicable for the steps as well so if you want to execute this particular step the uh, run the script file from the repo even if the inline script got failed you can do that as well all you need to do is you just need to add that if expression over here and over here i'm going to say if a braces of always is there then i'm going to be executing this guy all the time so i'm going to commit that but even before if i do that i'm going to say another command over here where i'm going to say hyphen name execute during failure so this is the one command which is going to tell me that if there is any failure in the step then execute this particular command so this step is going to be executed only if there is going to be a failure in any of the steps before so it is another operation that you can do that as well for example in real time if there is a failure in a step you want to send an email to the team then you could do that as well just like a triggering it so all i'm going to do is i'm going to say a run of echo one of the step seems failed and uh, this is something which i'm going to be sending as an email but at, at the moment i'm not going to do that so i'm just going to do like a echo command i'm going to commit this changes and i'm going to go to the actions and let's go to the selenium test job so you can see that it is currently executing and there is a failure and you can see that the run script from repo is still executing because we have told to execute it even if there is a failure because it's an always this time it is executing and execute during failure is something not happening because i actually forgot to give that particular operation over here i guess so if i go to the code to the workflow of the basic i actually need to add that particular 
expression over here i'm gonna say if dollar double slash of failure then just execute it for me so yeah that's something i missed i'm gonna save it hit actions And you can see that the executing failure is also executing because now there is a failure step and that's the reason it is executing as well. So you could see that these are the things that we can actually make use of while trying to run our source code while we actually need to perform certain actions. So that's it guys. This is how we can actually work with a bit of expressions like conditional expressions in our workflows at the same time how we can work with multiple jobs while performing certain actions.